What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. On today's episode we'll be working on some more enhancements for the Mark IV GTI daily project. We'll be replacing all of the brake components all around including the rotors and pads. Um, we'll also be installing some brand new wheels and tires. Fun fact, this thing still has all the stock brake components um, even after 90,000 miles. So it's pretty impressive but uh, we're gonna refresh everything today. Uh, before we get started, I'm just going to show you guys the brake kit I got as well as the wheel and tire setup. Um, then we'll get started by getting this thing in the air and removing all the stock components. Here are the wheels that I went with. These are uh, Koenig SSMs. Not a huge fan of the color, but uh, honestly they were such a good deal that uh, I couldn't pass them up. They remind me a lot of the Workmeisters that are on the FD. As you can see, very very similar design but a lot cheaper of course so as you can see pretty similar um, just the difference here being the color scheme but they are 18 by 9 with a pretty nice offset so I couldn't really pass them up let me know what you guys think And here's the kit I went with. It's the PowerStop Z23 kit, which includes slotted and drilled rotors for all four sides. We also have carbon fiber ceramic pads all around. Um, it pretty much comes with everything you need, including new clips, uh, the little covers that go over the uh, pins, um, as well as some grease. So at the time of this video, this kit was going for 360 on Amazon, and it got some really great reviews so uh, figured let's take a shot and try them out so uh, now let's just get all the stock components off and uh, move from there we'll start by removing the caliper which is held on by these two 18 millimeter bolts that's holding the caliper onto the carrier so we're going to pull that off and then we'll have some zip ties ready so that we could secure this without stressing out this brake line Now there is a little retaining screw right here on the rotor, um, but if it's anything like mine, mine was pretty much impossible to get off without stripping, but you could just drill it out and your rotor will pop right off. I'm just gonna clean this hub off a little bit before installing the new rotor. It's just some rust cleaner, to get that surface rust off. Okay, now we'll slide on our new rotor, make sure you are putting on the right one. This one says front pass side. So that's what we're going for. And I'm just gonna use a few bolts to hold this in place for now. Now I'll uh, get my caliper back in position. I'm not gonna fully install it yet because we do have to put in our new pads. So now I'm gonna just pop this clip off so that I can remove this pad. At this point, we're just gonna separate the caliper so that we can lubricate these pins as well as replace these rubber bushings. Okay, it comes with new ones. And I'm just gonna spray some WD-40 to help get these new bushings installed. Then we'll remove the cap to the brake fluid reservoir so that we could compress the piston without the fluid compressing. So for the front, we could simply compress the piston, with the C-clamp or something like that. Um, for the back, only a special version of this that also rotates the piston. Okay, 
Okay, before we reinstall the other side of this caliper, we're just gonna grease these pins that provide lubricant. So here are my two new brake pads. Um, so you're gonna want this one with the clips to go inside of that piston. And for both of these, the back sides, you'll wanna lubricate. So just add some of that grease. Then we'll install one of our new clips. Then we will fully tighten our caliper carrier bolts. Now, before we could say this side is good to go, I'm just gonna spray down both sides of the rotor with some brake cleaner. Um, from the factory, these will come with a protective coating that you're gonna wanna strip off. All right, now that this side is good to go, we can move on and repeat the exact same process on the driver's side. So the fronts are now complete. Now we can move on to the rear. Removing the rear calipers is pretty much the same as the front, except we're gonna use this eight mil Allen head to remove the bolts instead of an 18 millimeter socket. Now we'll remove these rubber bushings by removing these pins, so we'll Need a 13 mil socket on this side and a 15 mil wrench to hold this bolt in place. All right, with this section off, what we're gonna do is replace these rubber bushings, regrease the pins, as well as install new metal clips right here. Just pop these springs off. Then we'll pop this rotor off. Make sure you are installing the right side. It should say rear driver side. Now to compress the piston for the rear calipers, you are gonna need a special little tool. You could rent these from AutoZone. But uh, basically, there's gonna be two pins on this disc and they're gonna go on the piston. And what this thing is gonna do, it's gonna spin the piston clockwise um, while pushing it down. Um, and that's how you'll compress it. Okay, now we'll slide this piece back in. All right, with this side done, we're just gonna repeat the exact same steps on the passenger side. the brakes installed. We'll uh, screw down our brake fluid reservoir and then install our new wheels. All right, well here they are. I think the new wheels and brakes look great. My only uh, minor critique would be that those wheel nuts are way too long. Definitely need to get some shorter ones. But as for the fitment, I'm really happy with it. And I think those brakes look awesome. Love that drilled and slotted look. All right, 
right, well, with everything installed, I'm gonna go take these things out for a spin and bed in the brakes, which I'll describe in a little bit, but I'll be with you guys in a second. All right, guys, well, I just got in from a quick spin. So far, the brakes feel great. Time will tell to see if these things last long-term, though. Um, I did do a bed-in procedure that uh, everyone should do. It's really important so that you don't warp your rotors in the future. You want a nice, even coating of that friction material from the brake pad onto the rotors. Um, and the actual procedure is really simple. I'll go through it right now. But uh, basically, you want to do five stops from 40 to 10 uh, in rapid succession. And you don't want the brakes to cool down in between those. And you don't want to come to a complete stop. Reason being, you don't want that hot pad just to sit on the rotor um, and make an imprint. Um, after you do those five stops, you'll do five more from 35 miles an hour to five. Um, and then after that, you want to do a five minute cool down period. And uh, you don't want to use the brakes during this period. You just want to kind of coast and uh, let those uh, rotors cure. It's a pretty simple procedure and hopefully it adds the longevity of the rotors. Anyways, I think that the brakes and wheels look awesome. I do want to change out those lug nuts because I think they're way too long, but uh, I'm pretty happy with the design of the wheels. I think they do remind me of Meisters a lot and uh, set up the car pretty nicely, but let me know what you guys think. Comment below. Anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.